As you've probably already heard, Adobe's just updated Lightroom and Camera Raw to include a first new slider to come along in a long time, and that's the texture slider. So right now we're gonna have a look at the texture slider and see what makes it different in the clarity and the sharpness slider and decide exactly where we should use this. Spoiler alert, I love it. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today we're gonna to jump in and look at the new slider called the Texture Slider, which in my opinion revolutionizes the adjustments inside of Lightroom Camera Raw and Lightroom Classic. So why don't we have a look quickly where it is? So right now we're in the latest drop of Lightroom Classic, which is Lightroom Classic 9.3. And if we go under the develop module, you'll see under the presence, there's a new slider called texture, which is bundled there with clarity and dehaze. This is also in Lightroom and we'll see it belongs under effects. We can see texture. Now this is Lightroom. Now this is Lightroom 2.3. Now, did you notice I said Lightroom and not Lightroom CC? Okay, so there is yet another change of names in Lightroom. Now they've just gone with Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. They dropped the CC. So when we're talking about Lightroom from now on, we're gonna be talking about Lightroom mobile ecosystem, which is the desktop, the mobile app, on the phone and on the tablet. When we talk about Lightroom Classic, we are gonna be talking about the desktop only Lightroom Classic, which is the Lightroom that you've always known and loved, which was called Lightroom. And then it was called Lightroom CC. CC. And then it was called Lightroom Classic CC. And now it's just Lightroom Classic. A Lightroom started as Lightroom Mobile. Actually, it was Project Nimbus or something. Oh, don't be confused at all. So just remember Lightroom is the newer Lightroom. Lightroom Classic is the Lightroom you've always known. So also, if we look under Photoshop, under Camera Raw, and this is 11.3. So just remember the 0 0.3 drop. And if we look under here, we see texture, clarity, dehaze. Okay, so let's have a look at texture. First of all, we're gonna have a look at it with portrait photo. So why don't we zoom in nice and close and we can see, you know what? We've got a little bit of skin softening to do here. So if we jump under develop and we take the texture and we move it to the left, notice that immediately it softens the skin. And obviously if you take it too far, it's not gonna look good but you take a little bit, you can actually get a pretty nice effect there. So if we look at this before and after, and if we zoom out a little bit, look at this before and after, you can see it's a nice way to soften the skin. It also makes the hair look really nice. But right now I'm kind of applying it everywhere. If you notice here, it does kind of protect the eyes. See that? So what it does is it separates the frequencies of the image. The high frequencies are where our very, very sharp details are. That's where sharpening really takes effect. The low frequencies are our shadows and the mid frequencies are somewhere in the middle there. So we're looking at some fine detail, but not super fine detail. We're looking at the detail in the mids and that's what gets affected here. So if we look at this, for example, let me reset the texture by double clicking on it. So in the past, people have used negative clarity to get that effect. And let's have a look at it here. So we push the clarity down. It's just a look I've never liked because it just kind of looks like just a liquid with some kind of texture floating on top. I have never enjoyed negative clarity, but negative texture on the other hand, if we have a look at this, this looks quite nice. It's quite pleasing. All right, so in a second, we're gonna have a look at the positive uh, texture, but right now we're looking in the context of retouching. We're moving to landscape in just a sec. All right, so that's working really well, but maybe you don't want to cross the whole thing. So right now we're zooming out to fill and I want to just apply it on the face, maybe on the hair, but let's just focus on the face right now. So we don't want to get it on her outfit and everywhere else. So why don't we just grab a brush here and we're just going to paint on with our brush. Now it's going to look a little weird right now just because I have the settings set here to exposure. Let's just double click reset it or you could also Alt or Option click on Reset there. So now we haven't made any adjustments, but if we go to the texture and we drag this down, notice how now it's just softening the skin on the face. Obviously that's too much. So I know right now you're thinking, oh boy, yes, there's definitely gonna be some abuse of this and some overuse of it. So try not to be one of those. Don't be the problem, be the solution. 
and just use it nice and subtle so you get softening, nice softened skin without going crazy with it. If I wanted to continue this and maybe I want to apply it in the hair as well to give that beautiful silky hair, uh, I could just draw down here and see how that just applies to that hair. Just so wherever I paint, it's just going to kind of give that dreamy glow. So there we go. So she just had a Brazilian creatine or whatever they call it uh, treatment right there. So anyway, let's move on right now and let's see what this looks like on landscape photos. All right, so here's a shot I did in Victoria Beach, Laguna. And we've got some areas here I'd love to enhance these details. Now, in the past, you might have gone into clarity and pushed up the clarity to pop these details. So one of the things about clarity is it affects a wider range of the photo, also affects the shadows a lot. So if we look at this, look what's happening up here in our water when I move this. So with the clarity, we go there and we bring it up and it really starts to affect those other tones. And if you go too high, it gets halo effect. So I gotta be honest, uh, clarity is something that I used to use a lot more than I have been lately because I feel like it just affects the photo too much in other areas. It certainly has its places with things like skies and different things like that. But if we look at what it's doing here, we want, we're want we increasing our detail here. It's crunching the mid-tone contrast is actually what it's doing, but it's making this look a little fake and artificial. So let's right click and let's have a look and see what texture does. Boom. Texture brings out our details here without affecting this too much. So if we look at this before, look at this. See, it's just kind of it's making it pop a little bit, but it's not destroying our water there. It's just punching our details. Let's look at another example. Got the staircase here. And let's go into the develop module. Once again, this is Lightroom Classic, works the same in Lightroom and in Camera Raw. And if we push this texture up, look what it does there. Let's pull it back just a little bit. See how it's starting to just make this detail pop there. So if we look at this before and after, you can see, and in fact, why don't we zoom in a little bit closer and look at the detail here in the wood. Look at that before, after, it just really kind of makes that pop. Now an area I see where I'm gonna be using this a lot is with my aerial drone photos. I can see this is gonna work fantastic for that. So let's have a look at it in the context of aerial drone photos. This is an image I actually did in my previous tutorial that I uploaded yesterday. So everything I did in there still applies except for the texture. So check out that tutorial for all the adjustments of how to take this from this to this. And now let's see what we can do even further with this texture detail. Let's go in one to one and we can see we've got a lot of detail here. Look at this detail. And see, I've got a little bit of clarity, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click and reset that clarity. I'm not going to use that now. Now I'm going to use the texture. Look at this. Wow. <laughs> Bam. Look at that. Just really makes that pop. So if we look at it here, let's look at this detail here. We've got this beautiful tile roof and everything. If we want to see that, take our texture off, we get that, pull that texture up, look how we're able to just really pop that detail without it looking over process and without getting those halos around there. So I got to tell you right now, this is my favorite new slider. Of course, it's the only new slider inside a Lightroom. But having said that, I am going to be using this a lot. Man, I'll probably thrash it to death until I get sick of it. And then maybe I'll start getting a little more subtle with it. Just kind of like we do with anything that we find that's new. So remember, we can use our negative version for softening areas. Obviously, works good on skin tones and hair. But also can work well in other kinds of photographs. Or we can increase it to really pop that texture in detail in our photograph. So we're still going to use it along with sharpening and a little bit of clarity here and there. So anyway, what do you guys think about this new texture slider? Is it something you like or not? Let me know in the comments underneath. And also, I'd love to know what you think about the new name change for Lightroom. Just being Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. Does that simplify and make it easier for you to understand? Or does it add to the confusion? <laughs> Let me know in the comments underneath. So if you're new to this channel and you love Photoshop and Lightroom, why don't you join us? We call ourselves the Cafe Crew. All you got to do is hit that subscribe button right now. And if you've been watching a while, you haven't done it yet, also hit that subscribe button. And then you'll get a new tutorial from me. Make sure you ring that notification bell. Otherwise, YouTube won't let you know when I upload a new video, which is every single Tuesday and sometimes some bonus ones throughout the week. So anyway, guys, if you like it, smash the like button into this. Tell your friends about Photoshop Cafe. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.